chest injury in and of itself is the second most common type of traumatic injury that people sustain. So when you have a chest injury patient outside of what we're talking about, there may be multiple systems that are involved and thus why your patient doesn't tend to do very well. What I'm going to focus on here are four of the major chest injuries that have an effect on either ventilation, perfusion, or respiration. And obviously, since those three processes are necessary to keep us alive, the chest injuries that can interrupt those processes are obviously very, very dangerous and can quickly cause a um, higher mortality in your patient than, say, some of the others that are a little bit more benign. So the first one is the foil chest. And it's one of those types of injuries that often gets missed by EMS providers. And it's not for the lack of trying, it's just that everybody expects to see the characteristic paradoxical motion in that particular patient. When you've got a fracture of at least two ribs in three different places, you have a very unstable portion of that chest. The rest of the musculature, that surrounds the ribs as well as the skin and obviously the pleura that holds everything in place in the thorax kind of tense up when they're disturbed like this. And when that segment tends to move, uh, it doesn't move very much. And the way it usually gets discovered is that you will have someone uh, palpating the chest and all of a sudden they'll feel that segment as they go over that particular area. Uh, the problem with this is that, among other things, it majorly can compromise a patient's ventilation. And here's how. The, the segment in and of itself, when it's moving, is now unstable, and you have broken rib ends that are basically rubbing up against one another. That in and of itself really, really hurts. So in as a result, your patient doesn't ventilate very well. They just take a shallower breath, and that's what we call splinting if that flail chest is a little bit bigger. So say it's more than three ribs, say more than it's half the chest, let's say. The bigger that flail segment becomes, now what you also have a problem with is the actual expansion of the lung itself, because you have the visceral and the parietal pleura. And you have the visceral layer that lays on top of the lung and you have the parietal layer that lines the inside of the rib cage. And that's what kind of holds the lungs to the ribs. So as the rib cage expands, it pulls the lungs and creates the pressure differences that allows us to breathe. Uh, now, you still have that connection intact. But the problem is, is that the rib cage isn't intact. So now this opposite motion does not allow for that portion of the lung to actually expand adequately. So add those two factors together, and now that patient's ventilation status, in some cases, can be pretty well compromised. So how do we fix that? Well, we get them to surgery is the best way to fix it. There's really not much that we can do for this in the field to remedy this. And that goes with any traumatic injury. You know, these people need surgery, so that's what we have to do. We stabilize them as best we can and get them there. With a flail segment, the best management practices now center around two things. Now, as an EMT, you only have one option, and that is to assist them as you can with their ventilation. Allow them to ventilate on their own as best as they can, but if they need assistance, you help with that, whether it's using a BVM. In some places, might even subscribe to using CPAP to get a little extra pressure just to help keep that ventilatory volume moving through the respiratory tract despite the pain. Now, if at all possible, and if you're working with paramedic, what you'll want is some kind of pain management, some kind of analgesic that kind of takes the edge off, and that all combined with the effective ventilation would hopefully supply enough volume that adequate respiration would be able to take place. Outside of that, it's pretty much diesel therapy, and we get them to the hospital as safely but as quickly as possible so they can get surgery to repair that deficit that has been discovered. 